Last week on April 30th, the YouTube TV app was pulled from the Roku App Store, and it's not gonna be back until the two companies reach a distribution agreement, which is gonna be tough with all the sniping they're doing right now, and we'll go over that in just a moment. But what caused all of this, and what does it mean for you? For now, this is all about the YouTube TV app, but could it affect the actual YouTube app? Hmm, could be interesting. Let's dive in. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, if it's informative uh, or helpful in some way, then don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you check out our Friday live streams. I host a live stream on this channel every Friday. Make sure you're there, they're a lot of fun. So what exactly is going on here? Well, the first thing to note is that this isn't exactly the apocalypse. Things will probably get worked out, but the fight that's going on is pretty public and it's also pretty aggressive, more so than a normal spat that usually happens behind closed doors and we don't get a good look at it. But anyway, the other thing to note is that the YouTube TV app is still available for you to watch if you already have it. You just can't download it new to a Roku device at the moment. So how did this all happen? Well, first you need to understand the relationship between Roku and Google. This is a distribution agreement and it's from a content provider to a platform. So in this case, YouTube TV is the content provider, Roku is the platform. It's actually similar to traditional TV agreements that you would find between say, Dish and Disney or Viacom. In this case, if the platform Roku wants to carry YouTube TV, then they and Google have to both agree on the price and terms to make it go forward. And the terms here go beyond just how much will you pay us? I mean, that's kind of the easy part in some ways. And here's where Roku's statements come in. Before the app was pulled, Roku sent out an email that accused Google in broad terms of being anti-competitive. Later, they did get more specific. They leveled four charges against Google. So Roku says that Google asked for a dedicated search results row for YouTube in the Roku search, and they wanted to make those YouTube results more prominent. Now, if that's true, that's huge. Roku's whole thing is being brand agnostic and simply listing uh, in order of price when you search for a title. The second thing that they say Google required them to do is block search results from other apps while in YouTube. Now, this is the case already. Actually, if you're in YouTube and you use voice search on your Roku remote, it pulls up search results in YouTube. Now, you may argue that this is more convenient, this is better this way, and I'm sure Google would, but from Roku's perspective, no other app operates this way. If you go into Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever, and you use the voice search command, it will actually take you out of that app. So even if you're in Disney Plus and you search for Star Wars, it's going to take you out to the Roku search results and then ultimately probably point you back toward Disney Plus in that case. So this is already the status quo, it kind of just sounds like Roku would like to change that so that when you use the voice search button on your remote, no matter where you are in your Roku uh, ecosystem, then you'll get the same results every time from every app. The third charge that Roku has brought is they say Google required them to favor YouTube music results from voice commands, even if the user has another app set as their default music app. So kind of similar to the last one, they want to maintain that brand agnosticism. Now, the fourth thing that Roku says is maybe the most interesting, it might be the most important, but it's definitely the most arcane. There's some technical stuff, but hang with me. I promise I'll make it easy to understand. Roku says Google threatened to require Roku to use a certain chipset that would enable the AV1 codec. Oh, <sighs> yeah, that's a mouthful. But here is the translation. A codec is a software that allows files to be sent and received. Simple as that and not all codecs play nice with each other. So think of it in text terms. If you've got a docx file from Microsoft Word, that's not the same as a PDF, and not all programs are equipped to open every type of file. Video works similarly, and Google wants Roku to adopt the AV1 codec because according to Google, that's the best codec or the best software for delivering streaming video, especially on YouTube. Now, that may or may not be true. I, I couldn't say I don't have the technical expertise, but uh, anyway, the reason this is important is that in order to reach the AV1 software requirements, there's a hardware requirement. Roku would have to include new hardware in their devices in order to run AV1. And integrating newer, better hardware, while it sounds sweet, it would also mean more expensive devices. 
and cheap devices are one of Roku's biggest competitive advantages. Put it this way, Google's newest Chromecast device retails for 50 bucks. The cheapest Roku goes for about half that. Even the Roku Streaming Stick Plus is 10 bucks cheaper than the Chromecast. So it would be pretty sweet for Google if that cost difference shrank or even turned in Google's favor. And here's a fun fact. You know what device doesn't have the hardware capabilities right now to run AV1? Yeah, the new Chromecast. How about that? But that's Roku's side of the story. Google, on the other hand, has made its own statement over on the YouTube TV blog saying that Roku ended the negotiations in bad faith and that Google just wanted to extend the agreement as it was. They said, quote, we can't give Roku special treatment at the expense of users, which of course is essentially what Roku is saying that Google is asking for, special treatment. So which company is telling the truth about all this? Obviously, I can't say for sure. I will say that Google more or less confirmed Roku's claims, at least about the AV1 stuff, when they said that our agreements with partners have technical requirements to ensure a high quality experience on YouTube. And they say that Roku wanted an exception from that. So at least that much sounds like it's true. As for the rest of it, there's no way to know for sure who's telling the truth as long as these two companies are mostly slinging mud at each other. But what does this all mean for you? Well, in the short term, you can still use the YouTube TV app on Roku if you already have it. You just can't download it anymore. In the long term, I'm pretty sure the two companies are gonna work something out because as Google cleverly included in their blog post, this is just about the YouTube TV app right now, but the distribution agreement for the actual YouTube app expires at the end of this year. That is not an app that Roku would or could lose, so they need Google. But on the other hand, Google needs Roku, especially if they want YouTube TV to continue to thrive, since Roku makes up 36% of all streaming TV devices in the US. So yeah, I'm betting they're gonna figure something out in the next few months. But we'll see. In the meantime, hit the comments and let me know what you think about this whole mess. On your way down, like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get the notifications about those Friday live streams that I mentioned earlier. Come hang out. We do polls, brackets, Q and A's, giveaways, all this stuff. It's a ton of fun every Friday. So I will see you there. Uh, do YouTube search results, uh, results even show up on Roku search? They do, they, that's a great question. Um, I know that if you're in the, in the YouTube app, then using voice search will just search within YouTube. But that's actually a fantastic question.